The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to, well, this, uh, geez, I got my uh, stuff all kind of screwed up here, but uh, uh, welcome to the September 30th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, which would be 11.07, we are recording this show today at 8. But uh, everything that we share with you should be pertinent for the trading day ahead. Of course, if you are listening to us live, we would love to hear from you. So one way to contact us is by phone at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in but you still have a question, you can always send me an email. You send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're listening, you're in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got U.S. equity futures trading slightly to the upside. The Dow is up 18 points. The S&P is up about 18 as well. I'm sorry, the Nasdaq is up about 18. The S&P is up 7, and the uh, uh, Russell 2000 up about 6 points. Over in Asia last night, it was a mixed bag. The Shanghai off 17 or half a percent, nearly 2% for the Nikkei, 485 points. But the Hang Seng closed higher by three-tenths or 57 points. Over in Europe right now, you've got a uh, slightly green market. The uh, FTSE is up uh, one point, and the uh, DAX is up 33. Gold's up three bucks. Silver's up 20 cents. Uh, platinum is off five bucks. Palladium is down uh, 30 bucks out there. Natural gas is up 16 cents. Street trade now to seven dollars and three pennies. Lights we crude is trade out to 80.63. That's off 60 cents. Uh, wheat futures are up. Um, U.S. dollar index up 408 ticks. She traded at 112.61. I do have a 10 minute delay there, so that could be off just by a, a few. So let's begin the day. Let's begin our day. Understand where we are, and let's go take a look at the cash indices right now. So we'll switch over to all the primary cash indices out here, our top eight. You've got the Dow in the upper left-hand corner. So the Dow, you've got an A to B equals CD to the down pattern that has completed. The A point being out here on August 16th. The B point looks like it probably was September 6th of the day. It looked like September 6th. Retracement up into September 12th, and boom. It makes that bullish reversal candle two days ago. That was a bull sash candle. That says that the support level, the key support level now, is going to be the low of that uh, prior session. That prior session being 28, 9, 58, 22. But the point is the Dow Jones has a buy the D point pattern. What price should do is target its oscillator and change line. That's at 29, 831. If price is able to close above that, you should see a further retracement. The typical further retracement or, or target would be its recent highs, which basically takes us back to its T9 count breakdown area, 32,006. Now, if price closes below the low of September 27th, 28, 9, 58, 22. That spells curtains for the market. No, it spells is lower price. And during the show today, we'll pull up the longer term charts for the indices, try to get a feel for what they're communicating to us as well. Right now, we're just looking at daily charts. The same pattern really unfolded. Uh, you've got a TD9 count bottom in the S&P. You've got to buy the D point pattern. The key is that the key level of support on the cash indice for the S&P 500 is 36, 23, 29. Not until that gets taken out. Uh, will we have a failure at the uh, lows? Of course, you've got resistance up at its oscillator and change line. That should be its target. That's up at the 3741 level. The NDX 100, same kind of uh, pattern out here. It's got the buy the D point pattern. That took place because of the bullish engulfing candle that formed on the 28th. That goes ahead and that sets up. Now, this had engulfed. 
a bunch of sessions out here. I still think the support level is 11, 175.29. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, Russell 2000 has a TD9 count bottom. Its key level of support there is 1653.40. If we take a look at the semis, semis are in bar number eight. Today, we'll complete bar number nine as long as the semiconductors close below. So let's give you that number. They've got to close below 23.73.47. So I would say you wouldn't have much rally in order to get a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. But, and I can't say but, I can't say but, I have said but, uh, yeah, that's the only pattern. Well, the other option would be, um, because it's it's uh, by the D-point pattern, that form of this bullish engulfing candle from two days ago, that got negated yesterday with close below that. So you, you could get, these semis could also form another bullish reversal candle. Again, it confirm a, uh, I don't think it confirms a by the D-point pattern. Let me just make sure here. I, I think my recollection from yesterday, we took a look at this, and the A to B equals CD was quite a bit below where price currently is at. Let's just make sure of that. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, yeah, so the only real bottoming pattern that today that I could see inside the semis would be uh, would be the bar number nine completes and it closes below the close of bar number five. So real possibility. The transports, they've got a TD9 count bottom. So their key level of support to be watching and observing is going to be out at the 11960.50 area. The NASDAQ Composite has a uh, by the uh, a TD9 count bottom pattern, New York Stock Exchange as a uh, TD9 count and by the D-point pattern. So each of these cash indices, that's what we're looking at, should target their oscillator and change lines. Now, let's go take a look at, let's do this one step at a time. Yeah, let's do this one step at a time. Let's start here with the equity future contracts. What I want to share with you is each of the equity future contracts daily also have bottoming patterns out there. So we know the market's attempting to form a bottom. It's also attempting to bust out those lows, as we saw yesterday out here. So uh, today, not sure what's going to unfold. But when we take a look at the NQ charts, what I really want to hone in on are the intraday charts right now. So what's going on? So in the case of the NQ, I'm just simply going to open up a 10-minute chart. What we know about the 10-minute chart is that at its highs, its highs were about 5 o'clock this morning, this went ahead and formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Prior to that, there was a TD9 count that formed at 3.30 this morning. So there's two topping patterns that are in place out here. Now, you can see that the 10-minute chart has a nice A to B equals CD to the downside that it completed. That A to B pattern, A to B looks like this. Let's draw that in there. And then all I'm going to do is just move the A to B to the C point out here. That C point right there, you can see this made more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. That bullish reversal candle did not come until 8 o'clock this morning as we were coming on the air. So you now have a confirmed bottom pattern. doesn't matter whether the – and price side, that A to B equals CD pattern confirmed at its TD9 count breakout level. That is where you would expect – an instrument to find support if it is still bullish. So at this stage here, is it still bullish, DB? Well, it will be if price can close above that red oscillator and change line. See how that color changed? Out there, you get a valid bottom. Price goes up and targets that level. So not unless price closes above 11,269, will it suggest that it then wants to go take on its next resistance area. That's 11,293 and above that, 11,316. So if it's 11.14 uh, in the morning, you're trading above 11.316, well, that says we need to go take a look at the other intraday charts to figure out where their resistance zones are located. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. 8.18 in the morning, uh, equity futures, U.S. equity futures, still uh, pointing a bit higher. We're taking a look at the charts for the NQ. What we've established here is the first key level of support to be watching, certainly throughout the morning, is 11.226. That was the completion of a 10-minute uh, Gartley buy pattern right at its breakout level, to the neck out breakout level. If that area fails, then the next area of support coming from the 15-minute chart would be its breakout level, and that's at 11.192. The 30-minute chart, which completed a sell the D point pattern in A to B equals C to the upside, is trading below profile support. So I don't really have support. The only other support that I've got out here is its uh, swing point from 12.30 uh, this morning. That is between the range of 11.180 to about 11.209. The NQ also has a sell the D point pattern price right now is sitting on support. That's its red oscillator and change line. The same thing for the 120 minute chart. Now the 120 minute chart formed a nice TD nine count bottom pattern out here. And if price can get back above its most, so and it had an A to B equal CD, but it was not a confirmed sell the D point, no bearish reversal candle. So if price can overtake the high. So let's say it's 1119 in the morning and uh, price is trading above 11,351. What the message there for the NQ would be is price should go target 11,588. Now, I know I haven't answered the question if somebody asked it, um, but what happened if it busts out to the lows? Where is price likely headed to? So we'll try to answer that question as well. Um, if we take a look at the 240 minute time frame chart, what we have here is a Rosemontum indicator bottom with inside a bullish structured profile. Let me just expand out the chart. That way each of us are looking at the exact same chart out here. So because we're in a bullish structured profile, what price is dealing with here is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside the 240 minute range. The range is between, is between 11, 188 and 11, 566. Now if price can close above 12, 11, 283, Where'd the 12 come from? Uh, it didn't. 11,283. If you get two consecutive closes above that, then its signal to you and I is that price should then go target 11,566. If it takes that out, then you're looking at 12,140 as being a price target. All right. 
So that's what's going on in the intraday. Just to summarize here, you still have got bottom patterns inside the NASDAQ 100, inside the NQ. We don't with regard to Apple. There's no doubt about that. So that's where some selling pressure is at. What we haven't looked at here, and we should, well, let's go do that right now. Let's pull this over. Is Let's first take a look at our TAS market breadth for the 30-minute time frame. So for the 30-minute time frame, that's the S&P. Let's get the uh, NASDAQ over here. There we go. So as we can see right now, so what this represents if you take a look at the uh, left hand, upper left hand panel there, what this is telling us is how many instruments are trading above, inside, and below market profiles on a 30 minute basis. So, right now, with regard to the NQ, it's very bullish. You've got 64 instruments above the top, 17 below the bottom out here. And this suggests that for this, this time frame, uh, market conditions are such, and the time frames below it are such that you should see a further rally out there. That's coming from the NQ. Let's take a look at the um, S&P 500 for that same time frame. So for the S&P 500, for its 30-minute time frame, I believe it, too, is also bullish. We have not looked at the ES Mini. It is. You've got 188 instruments trading above the top of their profiles versus 88 below. Now, the message here for the 30-minute chart is different or should be different or may be different than we have for the 60-minute time frame. So let's go ahead and pull that over here. Um, and on the 60-minute time frame, uh, we can see that for all the speed dials, here's the S&P 500, for the 60-minute time frame, 94 instruments trade above the top, 247 trading below the bottom. So even though the 30-minute chart, market profiles bullish out there, the 60-minute, the next time frame is bearish, and that suggests we should have a choppy market. We've seen the choppy market all morning out here uh, inside the equity future contracts. Um, so that should continue. If this switches to a uh, bullish, uh, and the 30 minute stays at bullish. Well, then we take a look at the 240 minute time frame, the four hour time frame. As we take a look at it, it's quite bearish as well, meaning 98 instruments trading above top of their profiles, 229 below the bottom. So the point here, and if we take a look at the NDX 100, that's what we've got up on our screen right now, you can see that this too is bearish for all four time frames. So on a 60 minute basis, you've got 17 instruments above, 37 below for the 240 minute time frame. You've got 27 above, 35 below. So again, you've got bearish crossovers. So it's the NASDAQ that probably is the one that can lift all tides. So you want to watch uh, that those charts. That's what we just took a look at right here. Now, we did answer the question. Don't know if somebody had the question, which is where is price likely headed to um, if uh, it busts out the lows? So for that, we want to go back to our black background charts out here. So let's do that. Let's pull up the um, NQ charts. We've got multi time frame charts out here get this going and uh, so if we take a look at uh, patterns so let's say the lows are taken out let's just focus in on the uh, lows from uh, July now what I've got up on my screen here right now for the NQ uh, well really a couple different things what I've got up here on my screen for the NQ is uh, the uh, uh, the synthetic symbol that I use out here so sometimes numbers are off just a, a tad but if the lows get taken out whether we're looking at the, uh, uh, the December contract or Stevie's synthetic version, we're really going to get the same outcome. So that outcome is a close below the uh, June lows, June 13th lows, um, would then generate, I think, a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. So today's uh, action, all price action always is important to us. But today, since we're trading inside those June lows, if they get taken out, then that's going to suggest an A to B equal. And there's several A to B equal CD patterns out here. So if we just use the data that gets a uh, that gets printed, that uh, gets a uh, uh, provided to us each day, each week, each month, and we uh, redraw lines in the uh, sand out here. So uh, knowing that that is the B point, if that swing would be taken out, okay, that's pretty easy for me to determine, easy for you to determine as well. Then all I'm looking for is where's that next high come in. And that was the uh, trading week that began on August 15th out there. So that one-to-one -one A to B equals C, this is only a 46% retracement, would get us down to 8093. I would say that 8093 would not be its final destination, only a 43% retracement. Price traded along the left side of that C to D leg. That would suggest to you and I that we would that this could do or should do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D pattern to the downside. Now, we don't have that signal just yet, but we close below those June lows today. That would be the likely signal, and that would be supported if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart here for the NQ. So the monthly is trading below profile support. You'll see that it's A to B equals CD, a lot less noise than the weekly, way less noise than the um, daily out here. And that's going to give us that same A to B equals CD price projection, 80.93 to the downside. 
So again, those June lows are very important out here. Now, the interesting thing is, if you were to do confluence, and which we have on this chart here for the quarterly time frame, and we go all the way back to the 2008 lows out here. That's right. The low that came in for the NQ out here was the month of October of 2008, not March of 2009. If you go from that low uh, up to the high, looks like I might have been off just by a tad out here. I'm not going to worry about it. The high being the uh, January, the October 2021 highs out there. The 0 0.382 retracement is right around the 10.763 mark. It's off just a tad. I can see that. I'm not going to spend time trying to uh, uh, to deal with that. If we take a look at retracements off of the uh, 2020 lows out there, up to the highs out here, well, the 0.68 retracement area is in the 10.468 level. So this is your confluence zone. So price has got back very close. Now, the bottom of its uh, profile is right in that A range as well, 10.814. It's so around 10,470, 10,760, 10,814. So the real key level is uh, watching what happens if price gets below again, those swing points from June up there, because they would be single to you and I, the term, that price is headed much, much lower. See you, with TFNN. Look great. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I post the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 829 in the morning. We are recording today's show between 8 and 9. You've got uh, U.S. equity futures are pointed to the upside. Dow futures up about 80 points. Uh, NASDAQ around 54. Of course, we've got a lot of movement, so I don't know what uh, is released. Well, it's 830. Uh, it is the last Friday in uh, September, so something was just released. My apology for not knowing that. Now we were going to the negative here in the uh, Dow. So we'll let this thing here play out for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. What was it that... Uh, you know, I just don't see it. What breaking news? What is the uh, what was the numbers that were reported out here? My apology for not. Oh, Corp 
core prices, uh, core PCE prices out here. So um, uh, let's uh, let's go back to the, uh, the uh, you know, we were taking a look at the NQ out here. What I want to do is, uh, let me make sure we're on the right charts here. No, we're not on the right charts. Uh, yeah, yes, we are. Okay, perfect. All right. So what I want to do is, is uh, here's, here's the longer term charts as well. So we're taking a look at, you know, if the lows of June get taken out, specifically right now, we're taking a look at the NQ or the NDX 100. So I just wanted to bring this back really to the NDX for you. And here, if we take for this, you've got the yearly chart. The yearly chart right now has a uh, bearish engulfing candle. We completely engulfed uh, the prior year. We're trading into the 2020 range out there. Of course, uh, we still have a few months left in the year out here. But that that could be, uh, you get that bearish engulfing candle, that could be suggesting that the markets move lower into 2023, maybe even 2024. Uh, we'll take things one step at a time. Here, you can see the June lows. You can see an A to B. I've drawn in an A to B equals CD pattern here for the monthly time frame chart. So those lows, what you're watching today as we end the month, is if price does close below 11.037.21, the NASDAQ 100 cash indice chart from its monthly time frame will suggest an A to B equals CD to the downside. That would take us to its next TD9 count breakout area, which is in the 74.23 range. As we look to the weekly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count bottom. So therefore, if today price closes below 11.037.21, that same level out there, that pattern will get negated. You negate a TD9 count bottom, that suggests lower price out there. So we know what the, if the lows get taken out, what that is suggesting to us. We also know that there are bottom signals, uh, both intraday. We took a look at those earlier. Um, so we've got a bunch of, we've got a, quite a choppy market out here now. If the seasonal pattern, this is the seasonal pattern for the NDX 100, this is a 37-year, I believe it's, yes, 37-year pattern that takes a look at just the, um, yeah, I can expand this out, just the uh, midterm election cycle year. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data points that we have for the NDX 100. So it just takes a look at those years. Now, this suggests that the NDX 100 does not bottom until the uh, October-ish time frame out here, not until maybe next week or the week after out there. So the NDX 100 is suggest that it wants to make a move to the downside. That's sort of support, not sort of, really supported by the charts if we take a look at Apple. So if we put up the Apple charts out here, we'll do that here momentarily. I think these are the Apple charts, yeah. If we look at the Apple charts, I just simply expand out the daily time frame. What you'll see out here is an A to B equals CD pattern. That says if Apple were to form a bullish reversal candle today, it would confirm a buy the D point, a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, price should head lower. That head lower would be headed back towards the uh, June lows. In the case of Apple, that would be somewhere around the range of 129.04 to 132.39 out there. So pay attention to today's uh, candle session here for Apple. Short of a, uh, a bullish reversal candle, it suggests lower price. As we take a look at, at the weekly time frame here, chart oh i just deleted it mm. it don't like doing that so i know that steve give me a minute here folks i don't want to have to recreate this let me close this out let me not save that there we go thank you sorry about that i'm going to put these i should be able to pull this back up if this works right so all three charts for apple should come up if it does there we go good so i've got the weekly uh, it's got nike in there okay that was what was in there we could talk about nike as well uh, but first, let's get these Apple charts back up on the screen. We'll take a look at the weekly charts for us. Right now in the pre-market here, let's see what Apple is doing. So Apple closed out at 142.48. Last trade fired off at 142.72 out here, AAPL. Let's get those charts up on our screen out here. And we're going to go to the weekly time frame. So we know that there's no bullish reversal signal, at least at this stage of the game, in the uh, pre-market here for Apple. As we look at the weekly time frame charts, there we go. Um, what we can see here is price very well may be targeting its descending trend line out here. So that would be a logical place for Apple to head to. Now, where is that going to be? It's in the 125-ish area since there's a TD9 count breakout area, 127.07. And the uh, TD9 count bottom inside of Apple on a weekly basis was June 17. That would be where price would be targeting. The high of that uh, TD9 count weekly session is at 137.34. We're trading at 141.83. So we want to watch that area as well. Now, the volume there is 541 million shares. So far this week, Apple has done 452 million shares. So you want to watch that. If price gets down there, tests and rejects that swing point, does it on lighter volume, that could be signaling to us at least a short-term uh, rally or a bounce out there. On a monthly basis, 
Uh, Apple is still trading with inside its uh, monthly profile. It closed below 140.48. Again, trading around 141.85 in the uh, pre-market right now, but it closed below that, which suggests run for those June lows or perhaps 123.13 out there. Speaking of Nike, let's just, uh, since uh, uh, we had seen those charts here earlier, Nike is trading out at 84. I closed at 95 yesterday. So let's get those Nike charts back up on our screen. See if we could try to figure out where they are headed to or where prices are headed to. Clearly lower. But the question is, do we see some kind of pattern, some kind of breakout support, some kind of profile support, some kind of anything out here? And as we open up the daily time frame charts here for Nike, let's do that. What do we have? From a bottom signal standpoint, we don't have anything other than an A to B equals CD to the downside. So the A to B pattern, that looks like this. We just simply go ahead and take that line. We'd move this over, or try to move this over here. There we go. We move that over to the uh, C point, so you can see here more than a one to one A to B equals CD. The uh, buy the D point pattern, uh, actually it does have a buy the D point pattern out here. But that's gonna get negated with a close today below. If price does close below, 95 even Steven, and you're trading at 84 right now, so that's a likely outcome. That suggests that price continues to head lower. It would need another bullish reversal candle to confirm another buy the D point pattern out there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart here, price headed lower. There's no bottom signal. In fact, it's negated a bottom signal. Uh, you are, I take it back, you are in wave number seven. Now, that can extend itself through next week and the week after. We, the wave number seven, just a very small part of the Chapman wave out there, needs to is only confirmed when you get a higher low. So short of this, so Nike trading below, it's on a weekly basis. It's breakout support of 96.55. Headed back here to its TD9 count from March of 2020. The high of that is uh, 74.06 or at 84.30. So very likely, at least on the weekly chart, that's what it suggests, Nike suggests, that that's where price is headed to. On a monthly time frame chart, you're going to form bar number eight this month, today. Uh, bottoms can't form on bar eight, but you still have bar nine that has to complete. In order for bar nine of Nike to complete, that means in the month of October, price would have to close below 102.20 out there. So if you're hanging your hat on a T9 count on a monthly basis, don't know if I would do that. Instead, what the monthly chart is suggesting to you and I is Nike should go target the 84.11. Well, it's traded at 84.22 right now in the uh, pre-market. So what happens if Nike closes below for the month 84.11 out here? Well, that would signal to you and I that Nike could be making its way back to 54.59. Yeah, that would be the message. So Nike, watch the 8411 area uh, today, and uh, that should provide you with some information. Now, let me just check here real quickly. We've got, uh, well, we're going into a break out here. Uh, so uh, if I don't have any private messages or email requests out there, uh, we'll go take a look at, uh, maybe we'll go take a look at the metals out there. Goldilocks trading out at 1675. That's up $6.44. We'll be right might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. 
Direction's daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. 8.42 in the morning. Equity futures still jumping around after the uh, release of the inflation uh, data out here. Right now, you do have U.S. equity futures uh, pointed slightly higher uh, about a quarter percent to the upside for the uh, NASDAQ, the ES, Russell 2000, about four tenths, and the uh, Dow is basically flat out there. So we're going to go take a look at Goldilocks. It's also been moving around a bit. Trade out right now at 1677, and we're going to take a look at the longer term charts out here. So we'll switch over to those charts. You'll see both gold and silver. You'll see the yearly, the monthly, the uh, weekly, and the uh, daily time frame. So if you take a look at the yearly charts here for both gold and silver, you see 2011. Form TD9 count tops for gold was the bar following bar number nine. And that says that that high out there, 2076.50, is a real key level of support or resistance, I should say. And we know that because it's already been tested and that held. In the case of silver, the TD9 count also in 2011 identified the uh, top out there. Now, in the case of silver, price pulled back to its breakout level of support right around $12.07 out there. And that is held from the yearly basis. Uh, focusing on a gold out here, we can see that we have a monthly, well, you've got a monthly TD9 count top. We have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out here. And that suggests that price could be targeted. If price does head lower, we don't bottom out here. Then the downside target for Goldilocks should be in the 1574 area. That's its monthly TD9 count breakout level. On a weekly time frame for gold, there's an A to B equal CD to the downside. There's at least a couple that you could draw in here. The one that looks to be most operative right now, the A to B would look like this. If we go ahead and we take that A to B leg, we move that to the C point out here. We'll see that we're inside that one-to-one -one level. Right now, gold is showing a weekly bullish piercing candle. If we get a bullish reversal candle at day's end on a weekly basis, you will have a confirmed buy the D point pattern on a weekly basis for Goldilocks. What that then should then suggest to you and I is that price will target its oscillator and change line. That's in the 1722-ish area. That LEM number is going to go up and down. So I'm just giving you the area right now. On a daily time frame, Gold already has a uh, confirmed TD9 count bottom, a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The price right now is taking on. It's been trying to get back above its daily profile. Old, old support that became new resistance. That level is 1670.40. We're trading at 16.76 right now. A close above 16.70.40 would suggest that gold should then try to make a run for the top of the profile, and that is at 16.95.70. And if price can overcome 1695.70, the next price target for gold would be 1742.90. If you look at silver out here, the case of silver on a weekly basis, it's waiting for a bullish reversal candle to confirm its Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. On the daily time frame out here, what do we have for it? We don't have much, but 
Wednesday could have been the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, we can't make that determination until price deals with the uh, 20 twenty dollar level and that was the high from September the twelfth. If price is able to take that out, then regardless of whether I have a bottoming pattern or not, doesn't matter. That would then be telling us that silver would want to make a run for the twenty one oh two area. So that's the bigger picture for both gold and uh, silver. Still no request in just yet. Let's go look at the short term time frame chart here for a uh, Goldilocks. So let's put that up on our screen here. This will take just a moment to populate. This way we can dive down and see what's going on on the intraday charts, see if there's any kind of tell anything that we can provide to you to assist you with your trading day. So now that we've got the intraday charts here that are trying to populate, we'll start with the uh, we'll start with the first chart that populates that uh, makes sense to Stevie. So come on, finish out here, guys. Sorry for the uh, length of time that it's taking for these charts here to, in fact, populate. So let's start with a 10-minute chart see what we know about it or where price might be headed to. So on a 10-minute basis, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That confirmed at 410 this morning. It formed a TD9 count pattern that lasted for about 40, 50 minutes out there. Then it got negated. Price pulled all the way back until it made wave number seven. So we talked about a wave number seven bar. That's letter G, a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave, but something to certainly pay attention to out there. One of our denners, two of our denners, uh, Saratoga Bob, uh, John Z in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, both, it was really Saratoga Bob, I think, that identified it. Uh, John was able to uh, take it uh, to fruition. And so wave number seven, that was confirmed at uh, 830 this morning. So this is now suggesting, this is the 10-minute chart for Goldilocks, that uh, what price should do, because we're trading above the top of its uh, profile, this would be bar number three above that, what gold should do is go target 1680.90. Now that's where the sellers are. Don't know what gold will do as it hits that level. If price closes above that on a 10-minute basis, well, then that suggests that we head back to its recent highs and head higher. On a 15-minute time frame, I don't have a uh, pattern per se out here. Uh, for us to focus in on, so we'll just simply pass on that, nor do I on the 30-minute time frame. The 60-minute time frame, no topping pattern there specifically. We do on the 120-minute. So if we're looking for downside action, assume that the uh, lows of the uh, morning get taken out for uh, Goldilocks out here, then the two-hour chart shows us a TD nine-count top. That formed at 4 o'clock this morning. It was uh, That's when it was uh, confirmed. And right now what price is doing, there is a new profile. It's kind of hard to see, so let me give those numbers to you. The bottom is at 1669. The top is at 1682.90. The center is at 1675.20. We're trading above its green oscillator and change line. That oscillator and change line right now is 160, 1674 even. So what the, even though we've got a topping signal here, this, this key level of support, Asset and change line is holding right now. Now, this bar here completes at 10 o'clock. It's only 8.48 in the morning. But uh, this would suggest if price can hold that green asset and change line and run that 16.82. And if price can overtake that, you can see you've got resistance here, 16.82.30, 16.85.60. So it's really going to be 16.85.60. That is the nut that uh, uh, Goldilocks on an intraday basis needs to close above to suggest that it wants to rally further. But you've got the nice TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Uh, you do have what could be a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. On the 120-minute chart, that pattern gives us uh, the following price projection. I'm just drawing in the A to B. We're moving that over to the C point out here. And that would uh, give us uh, a price projection in the uh, 1698 area. Now, notice that the retracement here, much less than a 0.618 retracement. So I would say if this uh, TD9 count pattern fails, this is a TD9 count top fails. You've got the A to B equals CD. That odds favor this will do more than a one-to-one. -one. But remember, you've got those resistance zones. Sellers camped out at 1682.30, 1685.60. That is where the buyers need to overtake those sellers. That's coming from the 120-minute time frame chart. If we take a look at any other signals out here, the 240's got a Rhodes momentum indicator, bottom signal, as does the uh, 300. Neither of these have topping patterns. Each of these are suggesting higher price. But first things first, the 10 minutes got to do its deal, and its deal would be a close above 1680.90 out there. So that's what's going on when we take a look at uh, Goldilocks out here. I believe there was a question inside the Tiger's Den. It was SR. This is from Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike says, SR, can you take the UCO and UNG oil and natural gas? 
Absolutely. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at natural gas first. NG uh, November contracts. So let's go ahead and get oops, let's get that up on our screen here. Let's actually type in the correct date. This will take just a, a moment. So you want me to look at it, um, but uh, anything specific that you yourself, Mike, are looking at that you're trying to get confirmed or, or otherwise. In the meantime, what I will do is just share with you uh, when we get back from this break here, oh, and to close out the show, I suppose, uh, what natural gas and light speed crude are showing to you and I. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, it's 8.54 in the uh, morning out here. Equity futures are slightly mixed. Uh, Dow and NASDAQ are basically flat. S&P's up a couple, as is the uh, E-mini Russell. Uh, gold futures up 5 bucks. Silver's up uh, 18 cents. We're looking at natural gas right now. That's trading off two pennies at 6.84. Uh, what we can see here, Mike, is that right now, if you take a look at the intraday charts, 10-minute chart, Price is testing a key level of support, 685. Don't know if this will hold or not. If price does not hold this level, and you can see it's uh, got 685 on the 10 minute, 684 on the 30-minute uh, chart. If those levels fail, 
then what it would be signaling to you and I is that price may be pulling back to the breakout level on the 60-minute time frame, $6.61. So you're looking for a place to enter. Uh, the reason why he's looking for a place to enter to the long side is because you've got a nice TD9 count bottom that formed out here uh, just a couple of days ago. That was confirmed yesterday. Price with inside its daily profile. And it says as long as price stays above 672, that looking to the long side would make sense. Now, what we don't know is if price will be able to take out its red oscillator and change line, currently in the 726 level. Uh, so you've got a bunch of intraday bottoming signals out here. But right now, you've got short-term support that's being tested. That's at about the 6 uh 84-ish uh, level. So that's the area to be watching. Watch the 10-minute chart out here for a few uh, further signals. As we go take a look at Lightspeed Crude, we'll get back to uh, those charts here. I don't have the intraday. I've got some intraday. The shortest time period I've got right now is the 30-minute. Uh, but we take a look at the daily time frame. Lightspeed Crude has a TD9 count bottom. The price right now is above its oscillator and change line. We take a look at profiles out here. The bottom is at 81.47. We're trading below the bottom of the current profile for lights we crude. So that is old support that may in fact be resistance. It was resistance yesterday. Uh, it was resistance this morning out there and only a close above that. Well, it's, um, really what you need to get is a close above 8251, the center of its bullish structure daily profile to seek that to then suggest that lights we crude wants to trade higher. Now the trade higher out here would be 8870, 8668 to 8870 would be your upside price target. On a 30-minute basis out here, as I expand out the chart, we're just looking to see if there's any kind of a bottoming signal out here. And the answer is there is not. So the charts actually look a little bit better with regard to natural gas, Mike, than they do for light sweet crude. Folks, stay tuned. You've got great programming all day long. Be safe out there and uh, have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Magnificent Monday. You have a fantastic Friday. Take care, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to